Last time, we saw there are some different ideas about what the sun and stars might be. So where does the supreme confidence among the majority of astronomers for the idea of great balls of hydrogen come from? Almost all of the ideas confidently proclaimed by today's astronomers come from their favourite theory, the Big Bang. This hypothesis, that everything came from a primordial explosion, must be the most unscientific idea ever alleged to have anything to do with science. Thousands of explosions have been observed. Everyone needed something to go bang, and they all destroyed structure, organisation and information. But with this explosion, which was not observed by anyone, there was nothing to go bang, and it created all the organisation, structure and information in the entire universe. With such a foundation to stand on, how did it ever come to be taken seriously? Fred Hoyle pointed out a number of well-founded principles of science which show its nonsense. But then he pointed out that evolution was nonsense too. And the scientific establishment threw him out. Today's scientists seem to be so satisfied with bizarre ideas that they accepted the Big Bang with as much enthusiasm as they embraced evolution. It was the brainchild of a Belgian Catholic priest, Georges Lemaitre. He invented it to explain some puzzling observations made by Vesto Slipher at Lowell Observatory in Arizona. Slipher found that the spectra of stars from galaxies which were faint, and presumably far away, were redshifted. What does it mean when they say a spectrum is redshifted? Well, when you look at the spectrum of a very hot element, it has distinct lines. Sodium, for example, has two very strong yellow lines very close to each other, and this gives sodium lamps their characteristically yellow colour. Calcium has three red lines, one orange, three green and four blue lines. A red-shifted calcium spectrum will have the red lines closer to infrared. The orange lines may become red. The green lines will move towards yellow and some of the blue lines move into the green. But the pattern, the characteristic spacings between the lines, remains the same. So, one can be fairly confident it comes from calcium, but the whole pattern is shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. The spectrum is interpreted using a theory called the wave theory of light. If the redshift is due to movement away from the Earth, then you can calculate how quickly the body must be moving away. Edwin Hubble worked on the 100-inch telescope on Mount Wilson in California. It was the biggest telescope in the world at that time. He measured many redshifts. He found that the fainter, and presumably more distant, the galaxies, the bigger the redshifts. He found this for galaxies in every direction. Hubble came up with the relationship between the distance from the Earth to a galaxy and the speed at which it seemed to be rushing away from the Earth. Hubble didn't believe they really were rushing away. He believed there must be some other explanation for the redshifts, but he just couldn't think of one. Lemaitre had come up with a similar relationship two years earlier, but he did believe those galaxies were rushing away at great speed. There appear to be two profound conclusions from all this. Firstly, the Earth is at the centre of all these redshifts, whatever they actually mean. That seems to put the Earth at the centre of everything. Secondly, if everything is rushing away from us, the universe must have been originally in a smaller, more dense, compact state. Lemaitre's Big Bang was born. He proposed that in the beginning there was what he called a primordial atom 
which exploded. Science disagreed about how big this primordial atom must have been. After all, there's so much matter in the universe they tell us about that if you squashed it all together into one solid mass, that mass would be huge. Some said it must have been about the size of the orbit of Jupiter. Others insisted it must have been compressed to a super-dense state and would have been much smaller. But whatever the size, they all agreed it was very small and very dense in comparison with the universe today. The astronomers and all the other scientists embraced the universe beginning with an explosion and the Big Bang became firmly established as the official mechanism of creation. But nobody was happy with the idea of the Earth being at the centre of all those redshifts. After all, hadn't Copernicus and Galileo proved that the idea of the Earth being central is just a stupid idea put forward by the Bible? This was the first clear proof that the Bible was not trustworthy. Proof which must not be questioned under any circumstances. And horror upon horror, this wasn't the first evidence the scientists had found that the Earth was at the centre of everything. But at least George Gamow came up with the solution to the size problem. A mathematical solution. Mathematically, one can push things all the way back to a point, which has no size at all. It's not possible to get all the matter in the universe into a point, but Gamow, a Russian scientist who'd escaped from communist Russia and settled in America, came up with the answer. There was no matter at all in the beginning. There was only energy. If the temperature of this mysterious energy was high enough, millions upon millions of degrees it might be able to occupy only a minuscule amount of space. Today, this has been refined into the idea that the energy all came out of a quantum wormhole, a theoretical curiosity which is millions of millions of times smaller than a single atom. The energy came shooting out of this mathematical point in a minuscule amount of time, so small that even an atomic clock could not have measured it. Then this raw energy cooled and miraculously solidified into elementary particles, protons, neutrons, electrons, etc. These particles got cooler and came together to form hydrogen atoms, with the odd helium atom here and there. So we end up with vast quantities of hydrogen rushing away from the original wormhole, getting cooler and more spread out all the time. We can see why the astronomers are so keen on the idea of hydrogen being the base material for sun and stars. The Big Bang doesn't give them anything else to make them from. And it allowed Harlow Shapley, a prestigious member of the scientific establishment, to say, in the beginning, hydrogen, instead of the Bible's in the beginning, God. But how do we get over the vexing problem of the Earth being at the centre of all those redshifts? Well, let's look at that next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.